Hello everybody, this is Dr. Tani, is a professor of pathology. I make these videos for all medical students. Hope someone may find it helpful. We are talking about congenital anomalies of the lungs. Today we are going to talk about four gut cysts. So four gut cysts are abnormal detachment of primitive foregut. They are formed as abnormal detachment, as you see, this abnormal budding, and then this detachment of this budding from the primitive foregut. And according to the wall of the cyst, these foregut cysts may be classified to bronchogenic cyst, which is the most common, esophageal cyst, or enteric cyst. So, bronchogenic cysts. So as we said, bronchogenic cysts or bronchial cysts are developmental anomalies formed by abnormal budding of the tracheobronchial anlage of primitive foregut in early development. This happened in early development. And a bronchogenic cyst is rarely connected to the tracheobronchial tree. In the majority of cases, it is not connected to the tracheobronchial tree, but rarely it may be connected. This is, in this case, uh, it is connected to the tracheobronchial tree and it causes compression of the trachea and causes cyanosis of the neonate and respiratory distress. It is common, uh, commonly found in the middle mediastinum or intrapulmonary. But we have other localization. Other localization were reported mediastinal, intrapulmonary, paraesophageal, cervical, retroperitoneal, uh, esophageal, gastric, lingual, infradiaphragmatic, and subcutaneous. All these sites were reported. We also have anatomic location of mediastinal bronchogenic cysts according to Muir's classification. We have right paratracheal, right paratracheal, left paratracheal. We have also subcarinal. We have right hilar. We have left hilar. And we have paraesophageal. And we have left paraesophageal. Gross pathology of the cyst. Bronchogenic cyst may be extrapulmonary or intrapulmonary and usually single, but may be multiple. It is usually single and well localized, as you see, well circumscribed, round or oval, size usually between 1 to 10 centimeter, unilocular in the majority of cases, but it may be multilocular. And the locules may be communicating or non-communicating. And it is fluid-filled cyst, as you see, filled by the uh, secretion of the lining epithelium, which is pseudostratified ciliated with goblet cells. Uh, here, the lining is a smooth inner surface. And here you can see the cyst. This is intrapulmonary cyst. And here you can see the cyst after evacuation. So after evacuation, you can see the smooth lining of the cyst. It is with a smooth lining. This is a case of coexistence of a bronchogenic cyst accompanied with a congenital cystic adenomatoid malformation, other congenital anomaly. This cyst... Uh, congenital cystic adenomatoid malformation. We're going to talk about this anomaly in the next session, but this is just coexistence. Uh, we continue cross pathology. The wall of the cyst is relatively thin, as you see, uh, but it may be thick. In other cases, it may be thick or trabeculated. Uh, and the, the cyst is filled with secretion. The secretion may be thick white, when it is uninfected, or it may be dirty white when it is perilant, when it is infected. Here also it looks infected, and this is infected cyst definitely. Okay, uh, this microscopic pathology. We go to microscopic pathology. The cyst is lined by pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Here you can appreciate the epithelium very good, and you can appreciate the cilia. And you can see areas of squamous metaplasia. 
Here the pseudostratophytes related columnar epithelium, and here you can see squamous metaplasia, particularly occurring at the sites of inflammation. And you see the cyst wall recapitulates bronchial wall with variable amount of seromucinous glands with cartilage and smooth muscle. Here you can appreciate the smooth muscle bundles. And here you can see that the pseudostratified ciliated columnar is interspersed with this goblet cells, beautiful goblet cells you can see here. This is infected case. This is a bronchogenic cyst with, which is infected and you expect the wall to be infiltrated with inflammatory cells, particularly polymorph nuclear leukocytes. Clinical course. In the newborn, it compresses a major airway, uh, causes cyanosis and respiratory distress. As this case, this is uh, in this case, it compresses the trachea and causes cyanosis and respiratory distress of the uh, neonate. In older patient, a secondary infection of the cyst is common in older patient and it may lead to hemorrhage and perforation. Here you can see in this case, intrabronchial rupture of bronchogenic cyst. This intrabronchial rupture of bronchogenic cyst. Many bronchogenic cysts, however, are asymptomatic and are found on routine chest radiograph. Here you can see mediastinal bronchogenic cyst, uh, and it was found ex um, incidentally detected uh, by a computed tomography in 35-year-old male. Treatment surgical excision, surgical resection is curative. This case of, this is... Thank you.